Zoom has a lot of neat features that you're able to use to create engaging activities right there in Zoom for your students. And one of these features is the whiteboard, the whiteboard in Zoom. So today I want to show you how to share it, use the whiteboard, all of its bells and whistles, how to use it, activity examples for how to use it with your students, as well as how your students see Zoom, the whiteboard in Zoom. When you share it, what do your students see? So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie from the edtechwizard.com. I am so glad you're here and that you found this video. Here on my channel, you can find videos all about teaching online, using technology in your classes and becoming the best online teacher you can be. So today let's get started. Let's just jump right in. The Zoom whiteboard in, uh, the Zoom feature, the Zoom, the whiteboard in Zoom. Okay, so in order to share this whiteboard with your student, you're gonna go down to Zoom, make that little um, pop-up menu pop up, and you're gonna click share, and it's right here. This is what I'm seeing, and I have all of these options for my whiteboard. So real quickly, um, we'll just go starting with the draw button. I can draw, I have a line. I can draw a line, this is a highlighter. I can highlight words with this if I want. If I need a bigger, bigger line to draw, I'm gonna use the highlighter. A line, this makes a straight line a box. If I want to box something, um, make it stand out more, I can add in a circle oval. This one is fun. I can add in an arrow um, if I need to point to something. Say, look at this. Make a nice big arrow for them. This is, it. let's clear this a highlight box. If I want to highlight a whole paragraph, this will highlight it. So if I have text, that, it will just highlight over. I can still see text in the circle. I have a diamond shape or lines with arrows on both sides and a solid, solid box or a circle. I use this one if I need to like block out something. Say if I have a, a word problem up here that I've copied and pasted or typed up, I will just cover that for a second so students will pay attention to something else on my whiteboard. I'll just block it out for a second. Now I can, if I click this select button, I can move my shapes around, which is awesome. Select text. Um, you saw that I can text right there. So the stamp button, um, these of uh, these objects right here are just stamps, little tiny stamps. I can't make them any bigger. It's just a stamp I can put on my whiteboard. Spotlight is fun if I want students to see my cursor. That is what the spotlight does. And an arrow, if I want to change my cursor to an arrow, please read this right here, read that. Eraser, if I just click on anything, it will erase it. If I hold my cursor down and just swipe it across my screen, it will erase everything it touches. My formatting, I have all of these colors to choose from. These are the different line width. Oh, I have to click draw to go back to draw. Different line width. I can use, I usually use these, these last two just because it's easier to see. And then I can change my font. I can make my text bold or make it italicized when I type. Undo button, that one's self-explanatory. Redo button, clear. This one, you have the option to clear all of the drawings. This includes your drawings and your students' drawings. If I want to just clear my drawings, leave my students' drawings, or if I want to clear just my students' drawings and have mine still there, I'm going to click that button. These are all of your options to write on your whiteboard. If I hover over your sharing your screen, I do have more options here. I can disable annotation for others. If I'm giving instructions real fast and I don't want everyone to draw on my screen for a second or everyone is drawing and I've asked them several times to stop drawing, 
then I can disable annotation for others. That means my students will not be able to draw on my whiteboard, just me. I'm gonna click enable so it's ready to go for my next class. The whiteboard has a ton of features, but how can you use this in your classes? So here's a couple ideas. I can um, quickly create a Venn diagram and my students can then with their text box type in um, whatever they need to to fill in on either side of a Venn diagram. I've used it in um, math classes where students are multiplying, they draw their equal groups and then go back with a highlighter and just fill in the dots to solve that problem. I've used it for math. If I want students to have their own space to to write something or to draw something so we're not drawing all over each other, I will use a line and just draw a simple grid based on how many students I have. And then I have students assigned a square. Now that's their square to work on and we're not working on top of each other. You can use this to solve a problem. Students can write their own problems for another student to solve. They can draw a picture of whatever you're talking about. Um, that way everyone can see and they can easily share with other students what they're using. There are so many ways you can use the whiteboard feature in Zoom. So in the comments below, give me some ideas on what you've used it for in your classes. How have you used the whiteboard? I love using um, technology in my classes to enhance my students' learning and get them all engaged. So if you're interested in learning more about the other technology I have, go ahead in the description box down below, download my free online teacher tech toolbox. I go over several, several technology platforms that I love to use like Google Slides, Nearpod, WiserMe, Kahoot. I use them all in my classes, so I have laid them all out in a nice document for you on what this is, as well as ideas on how to use them in your classes. So be sure to download that free guide, that free toolbox down below. Now that we learned how to use the whiteboard, all of its bells and whistles, ideas that we can use this in class, how do our students see the whiteboard? Sometimes you'll have a student say, I can't draw on the whiteboard or I can't find the buttons. So let me show you what it looks like on the student end. Before I jump into a student view, please remember if students are on a Chromebook, they do not have access to the annotate features. When you share your whiteboard, they will be able to see everything you're doing, but they won't have the annotate features. I don't know why. Um, but that's just how it is if they're on a Chromebook. So if I ever have a student tell me that they can't find those, find the annotate buttons or they can't annotate, I ask them what device they are using. I frame it as, are you using an iPad or a computer? And if they say iPad, I know they have access to the annotate features. If they're using a Chromebook or a computer, then I have to do a little digging. I'll explain where it is on the computer, how to find those features. And if they can't, then I know they're on a Chromebook. If I have older students, they know what a Chromebook is and they can tell me. With younger students though, I've had one student ask Chromebook, what is a Chromebook? So how to find it. So you can explain to your students how they need to find it. When you are sharing your screen, you start to share your screen. It will look like this whiteboard for your students. At the top of their screen, they will see this green button. For them, it will say you are viewing Natalie's screen. And then to the right side where mine says stop share, theirs will be a button with a down arrow, a carrot button. That is what students need to click on if they're on a computer. They'll click that down arrow It'll pop up with a, a list of words and they're looking for the word annotate. They're going to click on annotate and then this menu will pop up and they have all of these features that you have as well. They'll be able to draw, they'll be able to stamp, they don't have a spotlight eraser, they have the colors, not as many as you have, and the undo reboot button and clear their drawings. They cannot clear 
the teacher's drawings, but they can erase all of theirs. So again, uh, this right hand button up here, they're going to find the word annotate for computer. When students are on a phone, they have a couple of options. So they're going to find their annotate buttons on this round pin button right there. They're going to click on it and then they have the option for a pin or a highlighter. They have an arrow they can choose, make it big. They have colors, not as many as you, but they have colors and they have to click pin in order to use it again. They can change the width of their pin and they have that eraser that they can erase everything they have drawn and then the save button. So not quite as many options as you have, but enough options. So this is on a phone. They have to look for that pen icon in the corner. If students are using an iPad for your class, then they're going to look for that same pen icon down in a bottom corner. They're going to click on that pen icon and then that will pop up with their full array of tools that they can use for their whiteboard. If they're on an iPad, they do have more options than on a phone if they're using a phone. but. Either way, we'll get the job done. Their pen is the most important function um, for them to be able to use. So that's how your students will use the whiteboard. The whiteboard is a lot of fun in class. So again, if you have more ideas on how you use the whiteboard, please put them in the comments below so we can all learn and hear from you. And I will see you in next week's video all about Google Slides, a fun game you can create. Bye everyone.